God is is to God and that is what God is. So this is sort of why God is essentially just a human, but a souped up human. So that's sort of like what Feuerbach was saying. It's, re it's really like quite an interesting take on it. It's, and it was pretty sort of out there and pretty like, whoa, like when he did it back in the day, like hundreds of years ago. I'm Sid and I disagree. Hello, Sid. Uh, disagree with foot soldier then. Come on. Argue with him. Shout at him. Uh, no, he's foot soldier. He's not Brandon. I'm going to discuss properly with him. Uh, I think that it would be quite a miserable ideal for God if uh, God is what humans wish to be. Well, that's the um, point. No, that's not the point. Uh, at least not from the perspective of somebody who actually does believe in a God. Yeah, no, so, but that's what Feuerbach was saying. He was saying that we ascribe these features uh, into our God, and so that our God is nothing more than human souped up. So he was like, it was like, he was being very negative. The point yeah. was that it was very sad. In that scenario, I would assume that whatever the strange name of that philosopher was, he had never... Uh, uh, come across uh, tough decisions. There are times where we know that forgiveness is the right choice, but we do not do that. There are points where we know that forgiveness is not the right choice, but we do so. And yeah, but wouldn't, wouldn't you want to do the right thing in all of the right scenarios? No, I'm human. For example, I know that currently it would be the right decision for me to forgive my sister. Because I have achieved everything and clearly she has been defeated. Clearly, uh, she, ha uh, she is in the circumstances where she needs me and I, as the elder brother, should be there. But I'm like, no, fuck you. You were not there for me, so I'm definitely not going to do the right thing. Um, God would have done that. Yeah, exactly. So you shouldn't either. You should forgive your sister. Nah, I'm too human. No, that's a fuck cop-out, man. That, that, that's, not, that's not what your God would uh, want of you. You're, I you're know. not living up to your duty. Not living up I to your know. duty. I know. Sue me. No, I don't need to sue you. God will, God will work his, uh, his ways on you. I'll uh, compensate. I do other pretty good things to other people. I'm not very good with uh, forgiving. Especially the people who are close to me. I do not forgive them. And see, yeah, well... that is the thing that separates this idea from what actually God is. Well, the thing is, what, what, shit, yeah, uh, just clicked the wrong one. Yeah, what would God say about your situation right now? What, what would God say? God would say, suck it up, bitch. What, to your sister? Or to you? To me. To me. Would he, would he say that you should help your sister or forgive your sister? I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but what would God say? Not what would you say, but what would God say? God would say that you're the elder one, so be the fucking elder one. I know she's been a bitch to you. That was the test. You passed the test. Now take the fucking prize. And I'm like, no, thank you. The prize is just not worth it anymore. Yeah, well, then you're acting in conflict with what your God would tell you to do. So I don't see how that could be more. I never said that I'm a good man. Yeah, well then yeah, you're going to hell, unfortunately. On, um, yeah, you're gonna go. It's too minute a measure. It's just one person. I've done plenty of good to many people. I think I can manage to not do good with one, and it's basically vengeance. But you know what? You know what is written in the Quran: someone who can be trusted with a small thing can be trusted with a large thing. And someone who can't be trusted with a small thing can't be trusted with anything. 
Yeah, well, I have done these small things just to some different people. You're going to burn in her eternal hellfire. Uh, uh, first of all, a person who has no greed for uh, heaven has no fear of hell either. When I do good, I do good because it is good. When I do bad, I do bad because I want to. That doesn't sound very holy. I never said that I'm a holy man. I said that my forefathers were holy men. Yes. Look at what that brought that uh, what, what that brought to them. Prestige you're, you're only. You're disgracing your forefathers. No, I'm making a joke out of that. Yeah, so you're disgracing your forefathers. How I'm can you doing do that? All that well, I'm not satisfied, that's why. Um, what will bring you satisfaction? Can't you get no satisfaction? Oh, that's actually the problem with Sid. Sid cannot get any satisfaction anymore. Sid only performs duties. Sid you, is, you can't uh, get no. You nah. can't get no. Satisfaction. Nah, I you don't. can't get no. Nope. I mean, at least I cannot receive that. Uh, it's more like a mechanical thing. It's, uh, life has presented to you with these duties, you perform them and then you go kill yourself. Kill no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, what? I can't get, no. Satisfaction. No, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> when I'm yeah, well... driving down. <laughs> da, na, na, no, but da, da. seriously, uh, the thing is, if somebody looks towards God with something that he can confound within himself, then that is not God, that is him. God, at least what the Islamic definition of God is, is someone who is beyond us, who is supposed to be beyond us. But is Otherwise, God omnipresent? Okay, about omnipresence, this is a very well discussed discussion between the Sufis and the Sufis and uh, they somehow managed to come to a middle ground. The middle ground was that when the saints say that God is everywhere, what they describe is, is the signs of God. For example, wherever my footballs are, it is as if I am there, because that is the place that I have reached. That is the place that my work has reached. That is the place where my hard work, that is the place where, um, um, in a sense, my spirit has reached. Similarly, as God has made everything, therefore God is everywhere. And since God has made everywhere, therefore he is everywhere. When sure. people say that God is omnipresent, uh, I'm, by people I mean saints and sages, what they mean is that the Spirit of God is aware of every place and every being. Every being has been created by that God, and therefore they have a spark of God in them. Similar to how there is a spirit of myself in the footballs that are made in my factory. So that was the conclusion that thousand years of uh, bloodshedding concluded. Okay, well, that's interesting. Well, I guess then that if God is everywhere, then he's also inside of your ass. So you could just put your head inside of your ass and ask God the questions that you... Uh, foot soldier, did you really listen to my answer? Or were you just mechanically preparing that if this person says, yes, I'm going to ask him this. I think yeah, I you, you, you very clearly... To ask. No, I, I think I clearly defined something that did not... Uh, was not supposed to be asked this question. When I say... Okay, I'm just being silly, that, man. But I think you should forgive your sister, man. Like, that's oh, not nice. Fuck not her. Your sister. Hey! You can fuck her, boss can fuck her, if Patty is feeling a little bit like lesbians, she can fuck her. Uh, twisted, uh, he's too good of a person, I would not ask him to do that. Could, could, you, do, could you do me a favour and, and post a picture of her in uh, VC10? No, I could not do that. 
Yeah, but how, how do we know if we want to fuck or not? Then? Uh, look at me. Now consider somebody who is black and is a woman. Okay, that, that must be incredibly hot then. Oh, I suppose, but since he's my sister and I hate her, her very presence disgusts. Well, do you know what the righteous thing to do would be then? Well, I'm, I'm fucking done with being righteous. Look at what, my, what righteousness did to my father. I ain't my father. I, uh, the, one of the promises that I've made to myself is that I'm not going to end up like my father. I'm not. He was kind to women. I will not be. And because he was kind to women and because he took the sides of women in the family when there was fighting, when there were arguments, he took the sides of women. He supported women. He is in this situation today because he did all of that. And I was witness to that. I will not be that man. Women cannot be given the charge. The reason is that when they do, they do not realize that things don't come out of thin air. You have to work your fucking ass off today in order to uh, complete an uh, order. I had to use Elfie on fucking SR bladers. That meant that I was putting Elfie, uh, but by mean Elfie, I mean adhesive, adhesive chemicals on my fucking fingers. It fucking hurt. Do you think that women would be, uh, any women would be willing to feel that pain? No. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it would. Money. It, it doesn't sound like it'd be compatible with health and safety standards in the UK. Ah, uh, no, it's not that bad. You just burn a little bit of your skin, and then it covers. It makes a shell of a thing because it's an adhesive. So it uh, covers your skin. So after about 20 minutes, you don't feel a thing. And then you get cancer and die. Huh. Never thought about that. Is it cool, like, you can peel it off? You know, like in oh, school? Oh, of course. Oh, of course well, you can peel it off. <clears throat> that's nice. I, I like that. Well, I think... You know what God wants you to do, and if you don't do what God wants you to do, well, God wants. No, the thing is, God knew what I wanted as well. He did not give me that. Now I can make, you know, bargains. I can adjust a few things. I can lose some, get some. But there are some things that I just cannot do, and that one of those things is forgive my sister because she took too much from me. Well, what, what would you do if God was a woman and you're being a misogynist, right? And, but God's actually a woman. She'll be offended, right? She'll, she'll be like a, one of those SJWs with pink hair that you see on YouTube. Then that would not be God. Why not? What if you're wrong, Sid? Uh, because, wrong, bro? well, if I'm wrong, then I'm fucked anyway. So I better just, uh, uh, I should have at that point just killed her. Uh, but uh, she's my sister, and I don't yeah. want to call somebody who has killed their own kin. Yeah, that's kind of like a fucked up Pascal's wager. I, I can understand that, logically. Yeah, yeah, I don't think killing your sister is generally a good idea. I think it's probably a better idea not to kill her, to be honest. And I'm pretty sure God would agree, regardless of whether she's a feminist or not. Yeah, if you want to send her to Britain, right? Just stick um, some stamp. I'll um, take it, mother- right? Don't. I love no, you, no. dude. I love you, dude. I, I, I cannot... Uh, first of all, she's getting married, so uh, good riddance okay. with her. I thought uh, she was up for grabs. I did as well. I thought a couple of stamps on the head. Uh, she sits uh, still. Be I all right. still don't care. Okay. You well, see I, how fucking mad I am at her? Yeah, I don't I want care to... if she's getting uh, married. My parents had to bring my friends and blackmail me in order to sit in the people when his, uh, her uh, proposal was happening. I what hated be... that much. So Sid, right, if I turned up, right, and I was like, you know what, I really, you and me are friends, right? So I'm like, you know what, me and your sister are getting on, Sid. I want to marry her. Like, I'm, 
I'm not Muslim, right? I'm not even Christian. I like, I'm not atheist. I'm agnostic, right? How would that go down? Like, and your your sister's like totally into marrying me. What what would happen in your culture if I did that? Uh, would I have to like culture, escape with her? Yeah. Would I have uh, to escape? In my, okay. In my culture, this would not be possible. In my mm -hmm. family, uh, he would be disowned uh, almost uh, in a second. Oh. Oh, um, damn. What if I converted? So if I converted like um, to Muslim... I would be jealous. Oh, really? So it, w it would work, right? So as long as I joined the culture, uh, even though I'm no, white, not, right? Not what the culture, I... the religion. The religion ah. is very important here. The culture okay. can go and fuck itself. But the thing is, I would still advise you to not be with her because if you're marrying <laughs> her, I mean, okay, uh, okay. the reason is I love you, mate, and I don't like her. <laughs> Okie dokie, then. Well, and like, it, it kills me. And it kills me that her, her father-in-law to be is a fucking good man. A really, really good man. And I get along too much with that motherfucker. Boy, I mean, I, I sit and smoke cigarettes with her future father-in-law. What, uh, what if she got a sex change to a man? Would you forgive her? No! I don't I hate her because she's a woman. I hate her because she's she, the person. Who yeah, I thought you were in, like oh. fight simps and you know, like pissed off with yeah. women and you like, give no. them all this. Listen to how moral he is. I mean, he, yeah. he's more concerned with his father-in-law than his sister. This is a really moral man. He's concerned about other people's feelings, right? It's, it's I think obvious. I think we're at um, a little bit of a crossroads here, so we need to decide <clears throat> whether we're going to stay on this topic, which is essentially theism versus atheism <laughs> with the participants, or we need to shift it into something about veganism and non-veganism. <laughs> It's up to you guys which direction we're going to go in. I'm really not bothered either way. Well, we've got a foot soldier and a Nick Liston. Um, oh, yeah. It seems logical. Uh, Sid will go on any topic. I'll go on any yeah. topic. Um, yeah. Hey, guys. I, I just wanted to say hi to everyone um, right now. Hey. Hey. Hey, how's it going, guys? Sid, do you want to discuss anything about veganism this evening? Or would you rather oh, stay on yeah. the topic that we were on? Uh, uh, veganism. I don't know. Nothing's coming to mind. You guys start. I'll just jump in. Here, uh, I'll start it. Veganism sucks. Hey, <laughs> hey so now we've got patty <laughs> politics. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm the, I'm, I'm, the evil, how do I... I'm the evil farmer. So and how do I ban people again, SD? <laughs> um, <it's... laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy for it to shift into like whatever direction it wants to go in. It's uh, it's kind of a free for all. So. I guess, um, Patty, did, did you want to, like, discuss something with somebody, or...? Oh, no. no I, I mean, I don't really have anything to yeah. say. Because we've got be, Nick, the um, extremely friendly vegan, in. I know. I, I'm going to be, like, heading home in a few minutes, so when I get there, I'll be able to talk more. But, like, if people have a question about farming while I'm waiting for pizza, I don't mind answering. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> okay, that, that okay. seems fair. Um, Guys, I have, a, I have a better, I have a better argument. I see a very old uh, picture or video of somebody called Bill Burr. And uh, why the fuck is this guy looking like me? <laughs> He's a comedian, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know who that guy is, but I see a video of him and he's looking very, very much like me. <laughs> hey guys, uh, if if no one has a specific topic, I actually do have one, which I think would be of interest to... Uh, I know it'll be of interest to SD. I think it'll be of interest to everyone else as well. It's um, utilitarianism versus deontology. I know we've spoken a lot uh -oh. about that. Um, Ooh, let's go fucking fight now. Come on, quick. <laughs> the, uh, the if I'm honest, reason... don't miss. Sorry, go, on. Sorry man. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that's... Yeah, okay. No, I mean... Yeah. But... Well, ethics for fuck's sake. Say... Yeah, let, let, right. let me explain right. why uh, specifically, though. It's because um, Foot Soldier, and, and uh, this was a video Foot Soldier did uh, just a couple of days ago. He said why utilitarianism sucks. And I think uh, you, I know Twisted, you and I both commented on that uh, video um, saying that yeah. we fully agree with his view. 
Well, no, uh, and uh, so I was just thinking now would be a good time mm -hmm. to talk to well, the soldier about that. I well no, I mean <clears throat> that that video came out of a six hour conversation that uh, maybe not just out of a six hour conversation that being forty had, but um we'd already like <clears throat> that it was sort of the end point of a, a conversation we'd already had. So um yeah, um I saw your comment on it and I thought it was funny and like interesting and shit. But um I just I think we've already had the conversations. Um okay. I'm happy so to do it like again. Mm. I don't think it's exhausted. No, I think it's always sort of like open. Like me and uh, Tomaso, right. for instance, are sort of like still sort of like hashing out how we feel. Uh, right, right. A, a value level. Um, mm -hmm. But I think uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to put foot, foot soldiers sort of like words out uh, without asking him. But um, sure. I, I think like his, we start from different points. Yeah. But we we value similar things. And our normative ethics are slightly different. So, but I don't think we're that different of people. Or yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. All, 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 all that, all that video was getting at was the fact that if I add up your pain and I add up my pain, there's no one in particular for who that pain is a pain. Right. I thought it was a good video, man. Um, are you in the mood to discuss it, or do you prefer to discuss something else? Because I don't want to question you on something if you're not in the mood to talk Let's about do it. it. But if it. If it turns into a shit show, it's your fault, right? <laughs> well, I, I yeah, can I talk mean, about this. I can, <laughs> I, 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 can, I can go into a philosophical rabbit hole for the next nine hours, but I don't think anyone else in here would want that. Can but, you make it uh, ten yeah, hours? Got, I would. I mean, we do. It's just, can we handle it? <laughs> we can handle it. We have handled much worse, and I am yes. very much into it by now. I yeah, but I don't want arguments. Uh, if, if I'm honest, I I. <clears throat> then I you like don't argue. It. I'll, do the, I'll, I'll do the argument. Everybody knows that nobody takes offense to me. And no, I uh, know. Sid's the most argumentative motherfucker I've ever met in my life <laughs> by about times a hundred. But he's also like probably the person who's the most forgiving as well. Um, what I don't want is like for everyone to sort of like uh, actually fall out. So, oh no fuck you off, you fucking that. idiot! Piss off, go on, fuck off. Get out. Nobody's gonna <laughs> fall off. Yeah, me. I, I think it'll stay friendly. Me. I, I don't think it's gonna get that aggressive. Um, no, but not at all. Will, I'll just come back and it fucking will. will. It will. It will. Fuck you. It Anybody who doesn't want to have an aggressive will. conversation can just fuck off. Right, go away. I go mean, on. Get I out. Think out. I, out. I think out. Literally everyone here knows what's gonna happen. But let's do it anyway. Let's, let's see what happens. Go on. Okay. Cool. Listen. Prove if it gets wrong, too aggressive, bitches. if it twisted, if it gets too aggressive, you stop me, and we can change the subject to something else. No, you stop everyone. I'll I'll, watch. I'll sit back and watch. Let's go. Well, welcome to trying to moderate this. <laughs> I'm joking, but anyway, gosh, should we go? So yeah, foot soldier, is that okay with you, man? If we talk about the ontology, yeah, yeah, Let, yeah. Okay. Let's just have the conversation. Yeah, awesome, man. Um, can so I, I think? Can I just I, give um, Patty yeah, like uh, a yeah, complete go. rule over everything? She's the most reasonable person here, and if she says everyone stops, no, she's not. I'll debate stops. that. <gasps> You guys Patty, are so you're sweet. In, Thank you. You are in control. No, you are absolutely probably the most reasonable person I know. Fuck Even SD, though you're a woman, I will have to agree with this. <laughs> are you, you fucking with bottom me, boy? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, go. Cool. Uh, so yeah, this uh, like basically Foot Soldier posted a really interesting video about um, a week ago, and I think a lot of us commented on that. I know um, Twisted did. And I, um, I think Shadow Starshine did as well. Um, but we all, the thing I found interesting is everyone had slightly different reasons for um, critique, critiquing it. Um, I think SD and I have the most similar views because we both believe that utilitarianism is superior to uh, deontology. And I know Foot Soldier believes uh, the complete opposite. I think he believes deontology is, um, you know, is the correct way. And utilitarianism, well, his video says it, right? He thinks... It sucks. Um, so, f like, um, I guess my first question would just be, um, how did you become a deontologist, Foot Soldier? Like, what was it that pushed you uh, into becoming a deontologist? Well, I've basically been a deontologist since I've been a vegan. And since before that, um, without knowing it, sort of, you, I've always thought that actions in themselves were wrong because like, I wouldn't ever say that it would be morally correct to shoot someone in the head to save 
two people. But that is what consequentialism entails. That it's a moral ver- or it's, it's morally good to shoot one person in the head to save two uh, under certain in a vacuum in, in certain consequence uh, certain situations. So I've always thought like a, an, the action in itself has been bad. And then with veganism, it just really sort of supports that. It really in, um, it, it, it really reinforces that because if you're a vegan, you don't eat animal products and you, you don't exploit animals. That, that It's a doctrine that you don't exploit animals. And it's not like, oh, unless there's some situation in which blah, blah, blah. It's like, no. You just don't do it. And Mm -hmm. so I've always sort of thought like that morally, like just in terms of morals, it just doesn't make sense to me otherwise. Um, Like, could you imagine like saying, oh, yeah, I'm vegan. And then someone says, oh, well, I'm going to eat two burgers if you don't eat one beef burger. Right. And then you say, "Okay, I'm going to eat the beef burger then. Because Mm -hmm. and that's a vegan thing to do. Of course, it's not a vegan thing to do. It's nonsense if it's not. It, it, it wouldn't be a vegan thing to eat. Uh, vegans don't eat beef burgers. It just it's just not all, like instant nonsense. But foot soldier, like in a situation like, like let's even take a more extreme example. Let's say uh, I said to you, like I'm not a vegan, right? So let's say I said, if you eat one burger, I will go vegan for the rest of my life. Um, now, obviously, there's more good being done by you having that one burger, even though you're breaking your veganism. There's more good by you committing the action of eating that one hamburger. To get me to stop eating animals for the rest of my life, because let's say I eat, I don't know, a hundred animals every year, and I'm going to live for the next, I don't know, fifty years. It's like five thousand animals. Yeah, your mic has got a bit strange, but um, but yeah, I heard what you said. Um, so the thing is, um, this doesn't seem to be. Could I could I just that... interject just very very sure. briefly? Um, it's nothing to do with the debate. I just want full disclosure. Um, I am recording this, and I probably will upload it just so that everybody in the VC is aware of that. That's it. I'm not moderating. Artemis is moderating. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, cool, man. No worries. Yeah. Um, where were we? Yeah. So it just seems like if that was the case that you said to me, um, if you eat one beef burger, then you'll be vegan for the rest of your life. Well, the thing is, you, it, it's a sort of a weird way to go about it because right. no one would ever commit to a lifelong commitment just because right. someone... Yeah, uh, I agree. It's, it's unrealistic. I completely yeah. give you that. But, but not only that, not only that, what you're saying is, I am going to have a lifelong commitment to a cause which you believe in and which you think is the ethically correct thing to do. And it's a moral tragedy to not do otherwise. But you have to do otherwise and commit a moral tragedy for me to come in, in line with you, right? So it it's right. a contradiction in motivation. So it doesn't make any sense from that perspective right from the get-go. Even before we've analysed the utilitarian calculus, but wouldn't you see it as just a one-time thing? I'm not asking you to eat a burger every single day or every single week. I'm asking you to do it once, and then, uh, like, let's say 5,000 animals get saved. Like, it would literally be you committing one action that would be immoral in your framework, and then, a, you know, a, a lifetime of uh, net positive from the person not eating the meat. Yeah, well, the... Uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I, I think I've already sort of um, ad- addressed it in a way because it, it's like um, the I'm committing, I'm then committing a moral wrong, something that goes against everything that I stand for, person. Right. And then you're going to adopt my stance, but only because I have destroyed everything I believe in as a person for that moment, for, for that one day. And so I will live with the guilt every time I meet you and look at you and you're eating your vegan, your plant-based food. And every time mm-hmm. that I look at you and you say that you're vegan, it'll remind me that you're only vegan because of an obligation that you have for me because I went back on my moral duty. Mm-hmm. I, I was the cuck. So that now the whole relationship of this is just sprouted out of cuckery, right? So I'm cucking to your um to to your proposition or your your proposal and then you right. are having to obligate yourself for the rest of your life 
just because you want to keep a promise from some silly little thing. And the whole basis, the whole foundation of all of this is me completely disregarding everything that I stand for, which is just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that, right? Uh, if I may interject, uh, what I observe from this, uh, uh, at least what I have, you, have, you guys have discussed up to now, is you guys are not uh, factoring in leadership skills. There are some, for example, if somebody says, uh, if you don't eat one hamburger, I'm going to eat two. Now, that is something that is trivial. That is something that does not affect too much. We have to give priority. We have to make levels in life. We have to do that in order to distinguish between what is more important and what is less important. On the other hand, if there is an oath that says that if you eat a burger once, I will never eat a burger again. The ultimate uh, gr uh, magnitude of the effect that it would have on your cause is so great that you not eating that hamburger is actually against your uh, ambitions. And I think that in life, at least strong people, at least people who do matter, have to come across these kind of uh, decisions. Otherwise, they will never be able to achieve whatever their ambition is. So I would have to disagree with foot soldier in this matter. No, it is not completely going against what you believe in. It is making a sacrifice for what right. you believe in. You are still a yeah. fucking vegan. You. I, I I would see it the same way, Sid. I, I that's kind of where I was going actually. Uh, I would see it as okay. You've committed something against um, your moral framework, but if your true motivation is to save the animals, and someone comes up to you and says. If you eat one hamburger to a vegan, and I will not eat animal products for the rest of my life. Now, even though you don't want to do it, it's not something you want. No, you know, a vegan would not want to eat um, a hamburger, right? There would be so much good being done that I don't think you would feel all that much guilt because you would you would recognize that there's such a positive side to it, which is that like a hundred animals every year are being saved. You know? Yeah. Um, well. There's different ways I can approach this. So the first way I've already approached it by um, saying that everything that came out of it arises from an abomination of right. my morality, which is an embarrassment for the rest of my life looking at you who for the rest right. of your life have to honour the commitment that's out of a, a silly thing. You might not want to do it, but you're doing it anyway and you have to honour it in this type of test. So that, that is... Absurd. But for soldier, can I ask why right. does that make such a big difference? Shouldn't the what, what difference does the motivation make? Shouldn't the end result of the extra animals being saved? Shouldn't that make uh, the bigger difference rather than what the motivation was behind the the action? Um, no, because what the, the thing is, you're you're presupposing that my biggest motivation is to save animals, right? And that's not my biggest motivation. My motivation isn't to save animals because otherwise. I'd be incredibly interested in wild animal suffering uh, and trying to eradicate predation in the wild. And I'd be trying to do all these things to reduce wild animal suffering. So if I was trying to save animals mm -hmm. and make all animals live as long as possible in the most comfortable lives as possible, then I'd just like right. have nothing best to do than to start sort of right. uh, animal sanctuaries and put all my money right. into animal sanctuaries and, and wild animal, all, all this yeah. stuff. But, but that's not my motivation. My motivation. But then, can I ask what what is your um like what was your um I, I I just assumed that you were vegan for the sort of ethical reasons. Is that not the case? It was it nutrition or environment or something else? Well, no, 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 no. Like it is because of the ethical reasons. But if I was to save the animals for the sake of the animals because I disliked animals or something, then that's not even an ethical position anyway. The ethical position is saying that this is morally wrong to do this. So I'm not going to do this. And I would recommend to other people that they didn't do this because it's morally wrong. It's not necessarily to, to, save, to save the animals or like improve the welfare of the animals because improving the welfare of the animals, that's not even, that's not even an ethical stance. It's just something that you want to do because you think it's nice. But for me, 
the ethical the ethics of veganism is exploiting animals is wrong let's not do that let's all not do that right and once we've mm -hmm. achieved that then maybe we'll have other objectives but before we've achieved that we don't have other objectives um because that is the root of like if you want to be sort of um um uh what's the what's the word when uh, intersectional if you want to be intersectional about it that's that's the root of the the problems that we have uh, as a species is it all starts at speciesism right um i think i kind of get it i think sd definitely knows more about this stuff than i do i uh, still disagree with you good soldier because with that attitude you're not gonna be achieving anything you're just gonna what you're doing right now with this kind of stance is that you only believe in the self you only believe in the betterment of the self you are not concerned with the betterment of the others or the animals well uh, nobody should be concerned with the animals they're animals human suffering is much more important because we are humans and family suffering should be more important because they are family but the thing is with that attitude the place where you're wrong is that you are not exerting in any way shape or form what you believe is right you are not willing to take the sacrifice and i believe that uh, you have named yourself very perfectly in that scenario in the war of veganism versus carnism, uh, carnism you're acting just like a foot soldier what well, so, so you think a leader in a leader in the vegan movement would eat meat in that scenario in a blink of an yeah. eye i think i think if the consequence to not eating that meat was uh, sufficiently great then yes i think they would like i think for example if vegan gains just to use him as an example could eat a hamburger and then save like the action of doing that even as unrealistic as this hypothetical is if it was to save um, a million animals somehow right i think he would do it um well the thing is um what what i'm saying about the action um i i don't think i'm quite communicating exactly what i mean um by my first objection right so right. my first objection that i've been going on about is that you're asking me to do something which isn't in line with my morality in order to achieve the this good objective or something right mm -hmm. so even if we agree that the objective is good um right. but i'm not asking but, you to do it all the time only yeah, in this no, one only extreme once. situation yeah but let's say i saved a million animals right. um for by eating a beef burger let's say there's this bizarre si situation right, where right. this there's this beef company yeah. that be, there's this beef company and the ceo is so rich that he said look right. <laughs> if you eat a, if you eat one of my beef burgers and publish it on your youtube channel vegan games i'm going to sh uh, shut up shop and stop my beef ranch so actually you'll be saving the lives of um millions millions of cows because uh i'm i'm going to stop my operation if you eat this beef burger on camera because i i can just put my money uh in other things right so um mm -hmm. so so vegan gains goes on youtube and he eats this beef burger and everyone sees and it's in all of the newspapers vegan eats beef in order to save animals and the whole situation would be parodied and it would be go it would go down as the biggest single act of hypocrisy like <laughs> ever and it would be ridiculed for the end of time and everyone would be like the only reason why this positive outcome happened is because you cucked to your your ethical stance right your 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 failure yeah it is I, it's, I don't it's an know abomination why that's seen as cucking though man i kind oh, of agree yeah, with you on that why why is that i would just see it as you made a noble sacrifice you were willing to sacrifice um your ideology for the greater good you were willing to uh, to put us put aside your feelings um you know as as devoted as you might be to the cause um for a good enough end result which is to save a million animals i don't think anybody could make fun of you um for making a decision as a vegan that saves um a million animals i i don't think um they could ever spin it in such a way you know Well, even Thomas Aquinas, even theists have come up with objections to what you're saying. So Thomas Aquinas said um, that, that there's the the double effect, right? So 
um, theory of the double effect. Um, it might actually be called something slightly. Essentially, it's something along the lines of the theory of the double effect. And what this is, is the theory that if a good action arises from the consequence of a bad action, then that action is bad. A good action can only arise from the consequence of another good action or unto itself. You can't have a good action coming out of a bad action. So, for example, if I shoot someone in the head to save two people, then that's considered a, morally, uh, a moral wrong. And if I uh, push the fat man onto the train tracks in the trolley problem, or yeah. if I kill the person for the organ harvesting, all these are moral wrongs because the good of this only comes at the demise of another individual, only comes at the price of murder. So it can't right. be seen as a moral, morally right thing. Now, a different question, a different question might be, regardless of the morality of the situation, regardless of whether you think it's morally wrong to eat a beef burger or not, would you eat the beef burger anyway to save um, a million animals or something? That's, that's a different question. If you ask me that, I don't know, if you ask anyone in the movement, they, they, they might sort of be persuaded um, uh, and but but then I don't know to, to, to me it just seems that in order for the vegan movement to progress as people understanding what veganism is and acting in line with veganism not because of some compulsion that they don't understand or some coercion but or, or some magic trick in a hypothetical but actually understanding what veganism is and actually wanting to act in accordance with it because it is the morally right thing to do. That can only come about from being an animal advocate and not by eating beef burgers, because you're defiling the very thing that you're setting out to do by doing that. I would have to disagree with uh, the whole argument that uh, good cannot come out of bad. That is not practical. That is not how the real world goes. I will give you an example for that. One of the worst things that ever happened to the Islamic world was the sack of Baghdad. That one incident put us back centuries. But even a bigger good came out of it. When, uh, and uh, Dr. Alama Iqbal uh, has put it down in his poetry very beautifully, saying uh, that uh, which means that uh, the Kaaba got friends from the uh, idol temples, basically referring to the Mongols invading uh, uh, Baghdad, and then they became Muslims, and they became the strongest caliphates that the Muslims ever had. So yes, good things can come out of bad scenarios. It's, it has happened a million times. For example, the French Revolution was a fucking bad thing. It had a good effect. For example, uh, and you know what? Uh, good actions can also bring about bad things. For example, the murder of uh, uh, Franz Joseph. The person who was doing it, he was doing it uh, from a perspective of good. Guess what that brought upon us? The World War One. Yeah, so but, whole yeah, but that, 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 that's not that. Uh, it was never the claim that a good action could never uh, cause a bad action to arise. So it wasn't the claim. The claim was that um, making uh, a quote unquote good action um, as a result of performing a bad action means it, it renders the, the quote unquote good well. action. So I gave you examples for that first. Yeah, sure, I sure. And I, I listened of... to those. I haven't addressed those yet. I was just uh, objecting to. Um, the, the the second half about the the good. So let let me think about this. Like let's say that you are you as a misogynist and uh, and uh, Muslim. Let's say that you could um, convert ten people to Islam, and you could also further your cause of misogyny. But in order to do that, you had to be locked in a in a basement. <laughs> and be like a BDSM gimp slave of like a woman, of like women came down and they would like lock you in a basement and like piss on you and stuff like this and just like really subject you to degrading treatment and, and sort of like uh, dominate you for one year, right? 
So are you are you going to accept that? Is that something that you're willing to do? In a blink of an eye. Because I will give you the reasons for that. The things that I will suffer in that one year will end with me. But the good that will be brought upon the rest of the people will live beyond me. It so, will so, have better effects. So it's worth being locked in a basement and getting pissed on and beaten by women to further your cause of misogyny and Islam, right? That, that, that's worth it. Well, I'm not saying, uh, and I'm uh, saying this to Tomato, I am not denying at all that I would be very, very much into SNM and BDSM. But yes, uh, foot soldier, I would very well accept that kind of deal. And I think that that is what distinguishes leaders from foot soldiers. Leaders well, are willing to take the hit. They are willing to uh, suffer for the majority. Yeah, but, Otherwise, but it's, they it's are not needed. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not taking a hit and suffering for the majority. It, it's making an embarrassment example out of yourself to further the cause that you're trying to further, right? So you, you're embarrassing the cause you're trying to further. Yes, the so, thing so is, you, you no, no, let, me tell you, you... let me tell you one thing uh, about leadership. Uh, leadership is not about getting the claps. That is fame, that is being a celebrity. Leadership is not that. There have been many examples of people who furthered a cause and were disregarded, ridiculed, shamed, shunned for their actions that actually brought upon the good for the people who are shunning and shaming that particular person. And so, those so, people are so perfectly you would, content. Those so you would, perfectly... Honor, you would yes. honor a cause by disgracing Yes. That, that, that is doesn't make what sense leaders... to me. No, it, it does make sense because the that, thing that's is... Not, that's not leadership. That, that's not leadership, man. That is leadership. We, dis I, dis we disagree I, here. No, because you have not been a leader and I have. Oh, how do you know that? Because, first of all, your name is Foot Soldier. Secondly, yeah, that really anything, of, <laughs> anything that is of significance that you have done is public. On the other hand, I have lived almost all of my life uh, in a stance of a leader because uh, that is the only thing that I know how to be. Well, I don't well, know what else to be. Not, not everything that I've done in my life is public. Actually, only <laughs> my activism is, is public. Uh, uh, my vegan activism is public. But um, everything else that I've done um, is, is not something that you'd be aware of. Whether it's public or not is not something you'd be aware of. So uh, you can't make a claim to that without knowing yeah, about that. But, but I, that's beside the point. That's beside the point. I guess I, you're I, right. I, think I, I, can't, I can't get over this the thing that you would you would honor a cause by disgracing it there have been many times in the history of men that these kind of things have happened <laughs> for example i think i think i think, I think it's just the, um, i want to i want to give the a big example that the yeah. biggest example of this particular thing would be the crucifixion of jesus christ his crucifixion furthered the cause. Uh, no, no, you're, you're, no, a, actually, that's completely wrong. So Christ died for, some, for something that he believed in, right? And, and even in the desert, like, for example, the temptations in the desert. When Christ was in the desert and Satan visited him um, and tried to tempt him and, uh, to, to demonstrate the fact that um, he, he was the son of God and stuff like this, and... Um, when he was starving and uh, Satan knew that he could perform a miracle and get food, but he put his faith in God. These, these things, he, he wasn't saying, he, he, like, he, he was doing what he believed to be right and suffering the consequence. He wasn't doing what he believed to be wrong just so he could get a, sort of a shortcut. No, I'm not saying this from the perspective of Jesus. I'm saying this from the perspective of Christianity. The crucifixion of a prophet is a disgrace to his people. 
but he did that and that furthered his cause. Let, let, let's, get, let's, let's get Patsy on on this, because this is Patsy's department. Patsy, do you think that Jesus or God himself would defile his own cause in order to further... What, what do you do, refer to as... Oh, you're, you're cutting out. I couldn't really hear you. Uh, he's saying, asking me what I define as defiling. Does that sound better? Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay, what, what, do you, what do you define as a defilement, like defiling? Like, for example, um, just doing the opposite uh, of what everything your morality tells you. Like, so if you've got, for example, if you're a vegan, you would eat meat. If you're a misogynist, like Sid, you would worship uh, women or you would do, do some, be, be sort of submissive to women. Or if you... Right, um, so an example, if you're Jesus Christ and you wanted to push the religion... You you would you would defile the the religion by having gay sex like that. No no no. I, I don't no. know. Maybe, maybe something like that. Yeah, sure. If, if no. yeah, because I know Christianity isn't isn't that fond of gay people. But, but yeah, so we that, could use that example. We could we could also no. use an example. For example, for example, like Jesus could lie to convince people to become Christian, but that would be against what Jesus is about, right? Lying. So Jesus doesn't lie. He tells the truth. Uh, and in the Bible, you can find a lot of Bible verses. Why about, don't about you lies. take? No, so why don't you in my take... in my in my opinion in my opinion, Jesus would not lie. Jesus would not steal. Jesus would not do anything against the Word of God in order to promote Christianity. Exactly that. Yeah, exactly. So, Sid, you are giving a, you are giving a completely different example here. Why don't we give the example? No, no, no. That, no, no, no. What's the uh, why don't what's they the other give example? The... Why don't we give the example that actually happened? God, in order to uh, spread his word, became not God. Became human and sacrificed himself. I mean, that is what the Christians believe. That's not a defilement. Of course, that's not a defilement. And okay. But foot soldiers is saying... is. Uh, what foot soldier? The error in your argument is that you are considering a sacrifice, a defilement. A sacrifice is not and should no, not no, be no, no, no. We've, we've just we've just gone through examples. It, Jesus would never lie or steal or murder to promote Christianity, but a vegan would never eat meat to further veganism. Right. Two completely different <laughs> scenarios with completely. It's not, man. It's not. It's if if I if I can be if I can be an obnoxious devil's advocate, I think vegans would do things like promote lab grown meat in order to promote veganism. Mm -hmm. That's a good example. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think from from that one, it's more sort of like I would say that that falls into the plant based food realm, and people like I that's wouldn't. more like an environmental thing, right? Because you can't really promote lab grown meat. Um. To be like you can't just say, "Oh, eat this instead," uh, because it tastes the same, without people understanding what veganism really is. If you want people to be vegan, because if you want people to be vegan, then they have to understand what veganism is and be on board with it. But lab-grown meat is sort of just an environmental thing of like, eat this instead, because then you won't be contributing to the environment, and it will and it will make me feel better as a vegan. But you don't care about veganism. I'm not sure um, I agree I with the be, idea. Yeah, huh. I think it's a lot more simple than that, to be honest. I'm, as far as I know, lab-grown meat is cultured from animal cells, and that's what makes it not it's vegan. Not vegan. Fact, right. Yeah, no, but but it's not... No, that lab-grown meat is vegan, in my opinion. If you can get um, lab-grown meat that doesn't uh, exploit animals... Um, I don't see how lab-grown... Like cells... I don't see how lab-grown meat does not exploit animals. Right, same. I agree with Patty. Like, I mean, you're getting the cells from an animal, so does that count as exploitation in your view? I, I thought, uh, I, right, uh, I, I thought the purpose. Really. I thought the purpose was that um, you you elevate animals to an equal position of that of humans regarding moral value. If you wouldn't eat lab-grown cultures of a human being who did not consent to getting their cultures taken. Why would you do so for an animal? I, I know you don't like the the the, the NTT thing, um, but um, I I don't really see how I don't really see how a vegan could like justify like, eating lab grown meat right. and still being a vegan. I I would agree. 
I think yeah. that veganism should exclude. Uh, wait a second. Why is court uh, muted again? What the fuck? But anyways. Uh, yeah, He's I only think... muted because of background noises. That's all. That's the only reason. I'll undo it in a second. Uh, okay. I was worried. Anyways. I think that vegans should exclude the term exploitation of uh, animals from the definition of veganism because uh, that is very very unnecessary they will include anything as exploitation we have to exploit even other humans even ourselves in order to achieve anything well that's just a different definition of what we mean by exploitation you're just using like an economic definition of exploitation Mm -hmm. which i would completely agree with but if we're going to use the terminology in terms of moral exploitation right, right. that that's the thing we're interested in yeah and yeah so the the, the thing is with lab grown meat it's a bit of a gray area because there is this initial pin prick so it's almost like a so absurd that it's, it's like one of these thought experiments that we run but if we can grant the initial pin prick which let's just say we can grant the initial pin prick then there's nothing wrong about lab grown meat because we we don't care about the muscle fibers that have been genetically sort of uh, reproduced. We care mm-hmm. about um, we care about negatively impacting the lives of living beings that can experience the world, and we're robbing that experience or impeding that experience. Um, so, so that's what we care about. I think that uh, vegans can. Uh, exponentially uh, increase their uh, you know work or people agreeing to them if they would exclude that definition or that part because the thing is there are many things that uh, uh, need to be used need and i'm talking from a moral perspective for example uh, eggs of chicken supposedly uh, those eggs are not uh, farm grown they are grown like paddy grows uh, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, grown, whatever the word is, uh, laid, yeah, laid eggs. Uh, because otherwise, these eggs would just be uh, discarded anyway. For example, how milk, uh, uh, those uh, cows need to be milk. Well, otherwise... they're, they're genetically engineered, genetically bred to produce vast quantities of milk to the, the yeah. point well, where they here. suffer. They are here, so well, they're, either... they're only only because they're bred into existence. Uh, and if we uh, so now the thing is now that they are here, should we let them suffer? Um. Well, th- this is this is a, just a a different argument that we're, we're going on a bit of a tangent here. What we were talking about was getting back to the original point of whether it's um. To, to eat meat as a vegan to further the cause of veganism. Hey, who's that bashing on? Um, yeah, um, yeah, if you could mute yourself. Yeah, it, it, on, it's court punk. Um, this is why I said we muted him earlier, so I've done it again. Do carry on. Yeah, sure. Um, so, if veganism uh, could be furthered by defiling veganism, is that something that I should approve of as a deontologist? Well, if Christianity can be furthered, by defending Christianity, by lying and stealing and cheating, should we do that? And I would say we shouldn't. We, we probably shouldn't do that if you're a Christian. Right? Oh, I'm not Christian, but if you're a Christian, you probably shouldn't lie, cheat, and steal to further Christianity, mm-hmm. uh, because it's defiling what it means to be a Christian. Eating uh, meat for one the, person is not exactly defiling veganism. And that's uh, I would actually just take a different approach. I would just say that it sounds like Foot Soldier, you're you're more devoted to the actual rules themselves than the actual end consequences. And that just seems strange to me. Like, I understand you're a deontologist, but it sounds like you're more concerned with preserving the um, sanctity of the rule than the actual end result of, you know, what the rule kind of results in. Yeah, well, that, that's what deontology is. It's saying that something is wrong the action in itself is wrong and mm-hmm. the consequences of the action aren't uh, important considerations insofar as 
uh, the moral wrong is not committed, right? So that's why I'm not. Yeah, you're right. I'm not concerned with the. That just result. seems so strange point. to me, though, man. That, like when, like the moment you said just five seconds ago, when you said we're not concerned with the consequences, it just. I feel like it's so strange to say that because it almost sounds like something a nihilist would say. Yeah, but um, I was a nihilist for quite a while before I sort of managed to um, reconcile Kantian ethics with with my my view of nihilism, with transcendental idealism, right? Because um, before I could sort of morally deduce. Um, morality, moral claims, then there weren't any moral claims to deduce, right? It, it just morality just doesn't exist. It doesn't make any sense. It's just completely meaningless. If you can't deduce what it is, you can only assert what it is and then no one has any agreement. So I could just be an er- error theorist about that. So I was an error theorist before I decided that it actually made more sense to reconcile um, my beliefs on animal rights and uh, the, the nihilism component and um, everything all fits together in a really nice, neat package uh, in sort of a neo-Kantian uh, way. I mean, I don't really see the problem with uh, making an assertion and then defending that assertion with good arguments. I, I don't see why just because something's an assertion, um, you know, it's necessarily um, morally incorrect or something i don't i don't see why it has to be objective um if if we can get like for example i think we can get most people to agree that killing is wrong killing of humans is is wrong under most circumstances yeah Um, but but you're not going to get them to say it about animals but i'm going to come along and say it's wrong about animals and then so who you're wrong and i'm right or i'm right and you're wrong and um so who who wins there you can't win so that's why well, I see. You I think someone so can win. Different. I think I think it comes down to who makes uh, the better arguments. I think that's the person who wins. Uh, well, we're, winning we're, we're is been... not like who wins on Discord. Winning is um, let's look at the statistics and see how many people are going and becoming vegan and staying vegan. Because um, it's not just how many people go vegan, right? If they go vegan and they quit veganism in two years, that doesn't really help further the cause. Yeah, um, but 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 why would people go vegan if they don't agree? Uh, that veganism is a moral necessity. If it's just about eating healthy, then that's not veganism, that's plant-based. Well, I don't think they have to agree that it's a necessity. They don't have to believe it's an obligation. They could just even have a preference for it. They could say, it's my preference that I would have a diet that doesn't result in the um, you know, excess killing of animals for meat and trees and things like this. You don't have to be an objectivist, right? In fact, most people are not. Most people, um, I would say, are subjectivists. They don't believe that uh, morality is objective and that, you know, uh, well, there's a, one objective actually, standard. Actually, statistically, most philosophers and academics uh, who actually... Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm just yeah, talking mo- about the most, general public. Most philosophers, I'm not talking about... Yeah, because mo- mo- most philosophers are actually objectivists. Um, right. I think I think it's over, it's over 50%, but most are actually objectivists. In terms of the general public, the general public aren't subjectivists Descript, uh, descriptivists or objectivists they're just nothing because they don't know what they are yet they just do whatever that their culture See, I, I would disagree a bit with that man i would call them intuitionists and i would say that they have an intuition of whether something is wrong or right and they may not be able to defend it as well as um someone like you can because you know you're in super intelligent and you know a lot about philosophy and things like this but they still have an intuition and they're allowed to have that intuition and they're allowed to have a preference and they can still come up with arguments. Like, even if you don't know anything about philosophy, you can come up with reasonably rational and common sense arguments as to why you have that um, belief. Which is why someone like me, who knows next to nothing about philosophy, can still come to the same conclusion about something like utilitarianism. And I can get on board with it because it just makes sense to me. It's um, almost like a math problem, right? Which action results in the most um, net positive, net good? And then uh, let's just pursue that action. So that's why I find it nice and simple. Uh, deontology to me seems to overly confuse the issue. Uh, I, I, I think I think the opposite is the truth, right? Um, yeah. And uh, thanks for saying the compliments. Now I just think I've got moderate intelligence. But I think the general public, um, as people who um, maybe don't think about these 
um, philosophical questions. Right. They they default to you, you say it's moral intuitionism, and I would say it's probably not right because they do it. They, they do what is intuitive to them, but only because culture says so. Moral intuition uh, intuitionism actually is the thesis that morals are intuited from a place of an objective morality. So it's actually an objective morality position. So it's saying that objective morality is true, morals right. are right and wrong, and we can find out about the right and wrongness of the actions by right. using our intuition. So when you say that, um, I think maybe what you meant with was that people would just go off their own intuition. Yes, and, sorry, that's exactly what I meant. Um, so I'm yeah, sorry but, if I but then, then, yeah, no, 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 you didn't misspeak, but it's just a, a technical difference because moral intuitionism is saying that I have contact with the moral knowledge of the universe or I have contact with the moral knowledge of God, for example. Um, and I don't think that's quite what you were saying. I think what you were saying is that people just have uh, sort of um, that they, they think, oh, well, that it's intuitive that murdering is wrong, but they only know that because everyone around them thinks the same and they just act in line with their culture. And so it's more of a cultural relativism because in Saudi Arabia, it's, it's probably intuitive that you should throw gay people off of rooftops, right? Right. So that, that, that's why it's just cultural, cultural relativism is what you're describing. Yeah, it sounds like. Right. Um, yeah, I guess moral intuitionism was the wrong word. Um, w what I sort of meant was if you go out into the streets right now and you were to ask people, you know, are you a deontologist? Are you a utilitarian? Are you a consequentialist? They would have no idea what you're speaking about. You know, they, sure. they, they wouldn't even be able to define these words for you. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. But if you were to ask them, you know, how do you feel about abortion? How do you feel about veganism? They would have an opinion. They would be able to give you um, an, a, an opinion on the subject. And they might even be able to defend that opinion reasonably well, you know, even though they're not philosophers. And um, you can see people do this on street activism videos and things like this. Right. So sure. But, I, but, but um, generally the yeah. res responses that people give are like classically cringe. Right. They're, they're like classically right. poorly reasoned. And they only say that because of their cultural conditioning. Like, for example, if you go to some sort of like um, white power march in some right. southern state or something, and you ask them what they think about racism issues and stuff like that, then they're culturally conditioned sort of surroundings are or their, 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 their surroundings are going to dictate their opinion on that and they're going to say things like um are oh, the immigrants are taking our jobs and, and this and that and these aren't things that they've sat there and worked out for themselves these are things that they've just heard around them and they're just like parroting right so that's what people do like everywhere else like if you're brought up christian or if you're brought up not vegan or you brought up vegan or brought up anything then uh, whatever sort of surroundings you have, you're just going to fall in line with those surroundings and, and parrot the same the same stuff. So unless you actually think rationally about... See, I would, I would agree with you, Foot Soldier. I would agree that culture plays a huge part. Like if you're born into, um, you know, Saudi Arabia, like you said, you're more likely to have an unfavorable view on, uh, you know, gay people, things like this, or women. Um, if you're born into a white uh, power sect, you're more likely to have unfavorable view on people who are not white. But I don't agree that they're destined to stay that way. There's people who give up these views by themselves. There's people who uh, give up their ignorant ways. There's people who are, you know, brought up into Christian families and they give up religion and they become. Sure, atheist. sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm one of these people. I grew up thinking that Germans were all Nazis mm -hmm. and I grew up um, in sort of like a, a Catholic right. uh, environment and uh, I was baptized and and all this sort of like stuff but but now i am yeah. uh, basically an atheist and right. uh, i speak fluent german and i lived in germany for 10 years and i'm probably going to go back and right. it's like I've, and so, i'm yeah so I, i'm, I'm like the opposite the average person can be rational even if they don't know that much about philosophy they can rationally come to a decision to give these things up you know well i, I am the average person i just I don't think time. you are, man. I think you're way more intelligent than the average person. And you obviously are much more philosophically well-informed than the average person. I don't think SD and Twisted are the average people either. In fact, I would hazard a guess and say that most of the people who talk 
philosophy on Discord are not the average person. I suspect that if you were to study their IQ, study their interests, they would be um, much more intelligent than average, you know? Um, yeah, so maybe. I don't think you are the average person, man, because the average person, like we said, could not define the ontology, but you can define the ontology. If I asked you, what is utilitarianism? What is Kantian ethics? You would be able to give me a definition for all this. My, you think the average IQ person is on like the street could do that? Man. <laughs> Well, yeah, well that's it... true. we're all uh, we're all uh, inferior compared to ask yourself. <laughs> What's an IQ? <laughs> well, well, the, the, the thing quota. is, uh, um, what 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 I'm what, um, I I didn't always know um, what I know now about philosophy, and that's still not much in comparison to some other people floating around Discord. Um, but uh, I taught myself. I read maybe ten books on the subject, right. or I think more now. But um, I educated myself and put right. a lot of time in to learn these things. But before I did these things, like everyone is just the average person until they make themselves wise to a particular topic, right? So yeah, um, you don't you're not born with philosophical knowledge. You're not born. No, I agree. Uh, yeah. What I would say though is that most people are never gonna uh, increase their knowledge on this, man. I don't think that the average person, and I put this in the comment actually on your video, um, which you replied to. Um, I said, I don't think the average person is ever going to spend time reading Immanuel Kant or uh, Nietzsche or something like this. It's just not in the average person's interest to read these long, confusing philosophical books. I just think uh, most people are comfortable making decisions um, based on a gut feeling and then trying to rationalize that gut feeling with their you know, rationality and logic and things like this. Sure. And I think also... Most people aren't going to do that, but if they watch a YouTube video of mine or of someone else's who they follow on YouTube yep. and they don't know about any of these things, but I'm explaining it in a layman's way right. for them on a particular topic. And I've already gone through um, a thousand pages of philosophical blah, blah, blah. And then I've distilled from that a coherent opinion on the way that I see the world and present it, they might mm -hmm. be like, yeah, that makes sense. They might be like, no, that sucks. But that, but they can still have like, um, they can digest a lot of books through a three minute YouTube video, right? Because- See, I think that's true for Soldier, but I don't think it's the average person watching your YouTube videos. Like if you look at your comments and stuff, it's obvious that your audience is pretty intelligent. Like they're coming up with really intelligent critiques of the things that you're saying. I don't think it's yeah. just the average idiot on YouTube who posts dumb comments on videos who are watching your videos or SD's videos or Twisted's videos. You know, it's not like the the nature of the content, like because you produce philosophy related content, right, is already a niche subject. I don't think it appeals to uh, the same kind of people that are going to watch a Kanye West music video or something like this, right, which appeals to a lot more people. And that's not a bad thing. It's just... Um, the nature of uh, the fact that you're talking about philosophy, which is a much more uh, narrow interest to a smaller group of people, right? So I don't think it is the average person that's watching your video. I think it's people who are already taking an interest. And that already, in my mind, means they're more intellectually curious than the average person. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that the standard of commenting on my channel has um, it is actually probably one of the best in the the vegan community, yep. right? Uh, I'd agree. What, what among among one of the best because my videos, um, I I don't know, like I I don't know. I don't read all the comment sections, but generally, like when you watch like a bodybuilder video, if you watch like a uh, what I eat in a day or something like this, right? Most of these videos is going to be like, wow, I love you, and sort of yeah, oh, stupid hugs, comments, or, right? Yeah, yeah, just like the the general public sort of comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, 